the Miami Dolphins drop a bomb on the NFL and sign Jalen Waddle, Jalen Waddle to a huge extension, uh, that, a three-year extension that gives him, what, $75 million in guaranteed money um, and makes him one of the top paid NFL wide receivers out there. So myself, Trevor Sykema, we're going to talk about all that and then get into our uh, planned rankings. How's it going, Trev? It's going good. Uh, yeah, this this news obviously dropping right before the show begins gives us plenty of things to think about because uh, the two of us just frantically Googling things like contract numbers and stats because obviously the Jaden Jalen Waddle deal is huge because now the Miami Dolphins are paying two wide receivers, top five wide receiver money in the league, but it also means a lot for two guys who have yet to sign their contract extensions in – cd lamb and justin jefferson and you and i were talking before the show i said holy cow justin jefferson's about to sign a 35 a deal that averages like 35 million dollars a year and you said that number might actually start with a four at this point for what justin jefferson is so holy cow wide receiver contracts are going high yeah they are and and they should be i mean this is you know they're the next position um after quarterbacks in terms of where the data would say start allocating your resources so it does make sense for those top wide receivers to be pushing that 40 million dollar mark when quarterback contracts that used to be 40 million dollars a year are now pushing 55 60 million at the top of that market um so yeah it, it does make some sense i genuinely think you know, Justin Jefferson, at the minimum, his camp has got to be pushing this number starts with a four. And it wouldn't shock me if he gets it, given where these deals have gone. A.J. Brown up there at $32 million a year. Amon and Brown, the deal that he just signed is at $30 million. That's where Tyree Hill was when he started that contract. So you can sort of see the inflation at work with those deals. And Devontae Adams, remember... For a few years, Devontae Adams' contract was seen as this crazy outlier that nobody wanted to touch. I mean, right. he's now fifth in terms of average per year. He's now behind Waddle. Like, Waddle's extension just surpassed the Devontae Adams contract that was seen as this crazy outlier that broke the wide receiver market for a few years. Yeah, it's tough because, I mean, you and I were talking right before we hit record teams try to find some sort of negotiation leverage with their young stars and they're kind of like oh well you know we'll wait it out you know we'll give it a little bit of time but the fact of the matter is the salary cap keeps going up so much and wide receiver play is at such a high level wide receiver value is at such a high level and like let's face it wide receivers are often like outside of quarterbacks the fan favorites on the team like if you have a good wide receiver like like fans love this player so you have everything working against you you have marketing you have you have overall value you have talent you have everything working against you if you're a team and it feels like these teams are like oh you know yeah well you know we'll wait we'll bring the deal to the very end whatever but the longer you wait the more players are just going to set the market with their extensions around the league and that's only going to make it worse for you so I thought a mid thirties contract for um, Justin Jefferson for an average per year was was crazy, and and now like you said, like the Minnesota Vikings might be praying that it's only thirty five million <laughs> a year for Justin Jefferson at this point, which is nuts. It makes like it it actually puts teams in this really difficult negotiating position, right? Where because if if let's say okay. The Justin Jefferson deal, it's not a surprise, right? This has been on the horizon for a while. They knew they were going to have to get this deal done. Jamar Chase, similar thing. Like, these are the contracts you know are coming almost immediately when you see how good that player is in the NFL and you start right. future planning for it. But so, so, you know, you can get these deals done years in advance. But at some point, like when, when Justin Jefferson's agent, and I'm not saying he did this, but when whoever's agent rocks up at the table – throws down the first offer and says, this is the number we're looking for. The sooner you get the deal done, the better it is financially for you because every subsequent contract that is signed only pushes that number higher. We're seeing that now with Jefferson. For quarterbacks, you're seeing it with Dak Prescott as well. Like every contract that's signed until Dak signs only increases the number that he's looking for. So the faster you can get it signed, the better which means that agent could just ask for the most ridiculous number he wants the right. first time around, right? <laughs> I know where this is going. I want $40 million a year. And you're like, that's ridiculous. Get out of here. We're not 
we're not even talking if that's your number. And then every deal that gets signed, the closer you get to that $40 million a year number, all you did was like drag it out until you end up in the same place anyway. You might as well just try and get them to what like the, the best number you think you can get that guy to as fast as humanly possible because every contract that's signed is going to get you in that spot anyway. So I, I'm looking at it right now. And if these numbers are correct, the highest paid non-quarterback in the NFL from a per year basis. So not total guarantees. That's a little bit different, but like a per year basis is Nick Bosa. Bosa is getting, I think the average is $34 million a year. That's the 16th highest that we have in the NFL amongst all players. And everybody ahead of him is a quarterback. If Justin Jefferson gets to, let's just say like an even $40 million a year. Right. He would be tied for 11th. He'd almost have a top 10 overall contract in the NFL, which would be crazy. But Minnesota is almost at a point where you can't not sign the guy. Right. So, like you said, you know, you're kind of in a situation where um, you might be forced to meet his demands. And, you know, Justin Jefferson has obviously had an unbelievable career up to this point. 1,400 yards to start his career as a rookie, 1,600 the year after that, 1,800 the year after that, and he didn't play a bunch last year. He only played in and only started in nine games, so he eclipsed 1,000 yards, but it was just over 1,000 yards. And I go, wow, that's – I mean, like Justin Jefferson, obviously, those are incredible numbers. Dude, C. Lamb's numbers are also nuts. He only had 935 yards his, um, his rookie season, but I think he missed two games, so that goes into it. 1,100 yards the year after, 1,350 yards the year after, and then 1,750 last year. So it's like CeeDee Lamb is almost at the point where he's going to tell the Cowboys, like, yeah, 35 mil a year minimum is like where we're starting this conversation. He's probably going to shoot for 40 million. CD Lamb, and Justin Jefferson's not the only player who's actively having these contract talks. I, I think that CD Lamb is putting himself in that exact same camp to threaten that like $40 million a year number for a wide receiver, which is. Holy cow, if, if if either of them get close to that, that's going to be – what that is going to do to the market moving forward, Right. thinking about the wide receivers that just came into the league, the Marvin Harrison Juniors, the Malik Neighbors, the Romo Dunzes, like if these guys are as good as we think they are, two, three years down the line, they're going to be pointing at whatever contract CeeDee Lamb and Justin Jefferson sign, and they're going to be like, yeah, that's me. And, and so to think that a wide receiver could touch 35 or above million per year – and then to think if one of them does it, many behind them could also achieve that. Now we're talking about a total reshaping of the pie that is the total salary cap in the NFL. And at least for Minnesota, you know, they now they got away from Kirk Cousins contract. They're now on a veteran or a, a rookie quarterback deal with J.J. McCarthy and OK, 10 million for Sam Darnold. But they, they have a relatively cheap quarterback situation to, for the next few years to go along with whatever contract they hand Justin Jefferson. Dak Prescott is trying to get C.D. Lamb's or uh, Dallas rather is trying to get C.D. Lamb signed at the same time when Dak Prescott's negotiating for a deal that starts with a six per year. Like yeah. I want 60 million a year. And by the way, my number one target wants 35, 40 million a year. Like Dallas is looking at a situation where they've got a hundred million potentially tied up in, in two, two players. players. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And two players who it's like you had them play unbelievably well this past year. You right. have a, reoccurring perennial defensive player of the year candidate on the other side and yet you couldn't even win your first playoff game at home like that's when it starts to get really tough to stomach is you look at what dallas was last year and were they a perfect team no but they had michael parsons who outside of miles garrett just being an alien could have easily won defensive player of the year you had C.D. Lamb as one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, and you had Dak Prescott, who outside of Lamar Jackson, Dak could have been right there for MVP. And it amounted to you losing at home in a playoff game. That's when all of that money, in my opinion, starts to become, you're now having a conversation of whether or not that kind of stuff is worth it. Right. Just before we move off this and to the, uh, the main topic of today, just to show you the inflationary price or the infl inflationary power of how quickly you get the deal done, Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle are two really interesting comps because they were in the same draft class, drafted very close uh, together 
they were sort of debate at draft time, which guy would you prefer? In the NFL so far, Devontae Smith has 240 catches for 3,178 yards and 19 receiving touchdowns. Waddle has 11 more catches, so 251 for 3,385 yards, so about 200 more yards and 18 receiving touchdowns, one fewer. And yet the, the money that, that – Jalen Waddell has extended for and what is effectively the same kind of deal a three-year extension on top of the the back end of the the rookie contracts is significantly more like by waiting Devontae Smith's deal ended up for Philadelphia being way cheaper than the deal Miami had to stump up for Jalen Waddell so the quicker Mm -hmm. you get these signed the better and obviously that's easier said than done because you're negotiating against somebody but man, the, if you wait just because you're concerned about, well, maybe we don't want to give the guy the deal right away, the longer you wait, the more expensive it's getting. 